there's an issue of disbeliefs in the mind of many people in this country about the existence of COVID-19 yeah. as an NGO. How, how do you think you can help the government in tackling this issue? Oh, that is a wrong belief. COVID-19 is real. Okay. Welcome to Golden Heart Show, a program where we bring you information about humanitarian activities in our society. We also educate and enlighten you on how to go about reaching out to the less privileged. While I'm Chizo Bachukukora, your host, welcome once again to Golden Heart Show. It's been a very long while we brought you Golden Heart programs, and don't worry, we are back and better. This period of um, pandemic has been a very difficult one for us all. Governments are trying on their own part to minimize the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic on its citizens. They are doing what they can to tackle the situation. And as they're also working, we have individuals and philanthropists who are also trying their best to see how they can help out in this situation. On this note, we have a guest in the house. He's a golden hat. He's a philanthropist, a human rights activist, the founder of Elijah's Widows and Orphans Mission International, and also the founder of Intertribal Voice Initiative in the person of Pastor Elijah Obaka John. You're welcome, sir. Thank you so much. Okay, please, can you tell us who Pastor Elijah Obaka John is? Yeah, Pastor Elijah Obaka John is the CEO and the founder of Elijah's Widows and Orphans Mission International, EOMI NGO. Okay. Yeah, and here with me is my media director, in the person of Mr. Labzi. Okay, you're welcome. You're welcome to the yeah, studio. Uh, can you tell us um, what motivated you to set up the NGO? Uh, what's your story? What's the story behind the NGO? Okay, well, what motivated me to set up the NGO is um, the challenge and difficulties I've seen the orphans, widows going through. Uh, for sure, uh, I'm not an orphan, and uh, my mom is not a widow. Okay. Yeah, but people keep wondering, just as you have asked, yes. what motivated me is the pains. I have seen the suffering and difficulties of the widows and orphans in our society. Okay. And that's what uh, motivated me to establish Elijah's Widows and Orphans Mission International. Uh, what year was it founded? Uh, Elijah's Widows and Orphans Mission International was found in the year 2014. Okay. Yeah, officially registered in 2017. Officially registered, registered yeah. so it's an official registered, registered yeah. Yeah. And you are, okay, that's a great one. Are you sorry going back to the formal question? Okay. Are you a pastor of a church or are you just a pastor? Oh, <laughs> no, 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 I'm a uh, an admin pastor with Blossom City Church International. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. I also have uh, an outreach, yes, I have an outreach ministry called Greater Glory Global Outreach Ministry. Oh, okay, that's actually a great one. Yeah. The ministry is um, doing a lot. Um, how did your NGO respond to the COVID-19 pandemic? Okay, yeah. With the help of um, uh, individual donors, we were able to uh, do a lot. Okay. Yeah, we were able to do a lot to the widows and the orphans. We were able to uh, distribute uh, face masks, yes. yeah, uh, hand sanitizers, okay. and palliative. Yes, the work God. Uh, we are able to achieve that. Niger State, Kogi State, and uh, Ogun State. Okay, do you have numbers of uh, how many you have reached out to? Yes, so far we have reached out to over 3,000 widows during this uh, uh, pendemic. Yeah. Wow, 3,000, that's a lot. Um, what are the major challenges your NGO has faced in this period of COVID-19? Beautiful question. I love this part. <laughs> one of the one of the challenges we've faced so far is uh, 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 not responding to our requests. Okay. No, we're having difficulties in people responding to our requests. Okay. Those who we feel that they are capable of uh, helping out, mm -hmm. you know, they were not there for us. And the reason is because uh, the 
the, the bigger NGOs have swallowed the grassroots NGOs. <laughs> so not denying us access to Russia to do not. Yeah. So these have been the major challenge we have faced during this uh, pandemic. We'd love to do more about the uh, means of doing it. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, when you say the big NGOs are swallowing up um, the funds, are you saying that those funds, where are they coming from? Uh, now, uh, some of these funds they are coming from international organizations, okay. the government sector, okay. the grassroots NGO have a little bit difficulties assessing those funds because of the criteria attached to it. Okay, so you haven't been able to meet up with the criteria. Uh, can you help us list those little um, no, they, criteria? They, they, they want to know the size of your offices. <laughs> they, want okay. to know, they, they want to know uh, the major project you have done. Okay. Uh, of course, we're just uh, coming up. Briefly, that we'll get there one day. Is it that you don't have a well-documented report of what you do? Oh, perfectly. We have the, a good documented report of every of our activities. Okay. Yes, we have every document that required in all our activities down to the data of our widows in every part of the nation Nigeria. Okay, so, but still, you're still finding it difficult to assess funds yeah. from government and international bodies. Sure. Okay, well, um, this challenge, I'm, I'm talking about the pandemic right now, how has it shaped you as a person and the NGO? Well, the, the challenge has really helped us to understand that there are a lot to be done to, for humanity. Okay. Yes. Uh, we now know it has opened our eyes to see that there are a lot of people who need that to be rich. The pandemic has given us the ability to create more ideas on how to improve our operation. Yes. Okay. So people, you've been able to reach more people, know that people need help. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's a, we, we're supposed to know that on a daily basis, there are a lot of people out there that need help. help yeah. Yes, okay. So how have you, what have you done? What have you done to sensitize the people about the COVID-19 pandemic? Okay, yeah, we have set up a, a strategies where we carry out, uh, we educate them on how to, uh, to, to, to maintain and how to contain the epidemic situation. Okay. Yes, like uh, educate them on how to use their face masks, Okay. You know, hand sanitizers, yeah. uh, observing of uh, social distances and all of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so okay. what we do? Done your best on yeah. that part. Yeah. Is it, how do you do it? Is it by getting them together or by um, going out to teach them or getting people together? Are you understand what I'm asking? Yeah. Are you, how do you achieve that? Okay, we're able to achieve that via our coordinators. Okay. Yes, we're in every uh, um, community we have coordinators that represent the the widows and orphans so they'll be to pass this information across to them organize them in few numbers then we'll go to them to educate them on that okay why you also are observing the social distancing sure. as, as, you, as you can see <laughs> of course <laughs> okay that's that there's a, there's an issue of disbeliefs in the mind of many people in this country about the existence of COVID-19. Yeah. As an NGO, how, how do you think you can help the government in tackling this issue? Oh, that is a wrong belief. COVID-19 is real. Okay. Very real. Mm -hmm. And thank God for the uh, Nigeria government. Uh, uh, we uh, thank them for their effort in dealing with that. So that is why we, we pass it, we, we preach it to them that it is real. So all we need to do, it not cost anything to maintain the, the, the rules and regulations on how to uh, avoid the infect. COVID-19 is real. It's real. Yes. So COVID-19 is real. It is real. Yes. All you need to do, as the government have instructed us, is wash your hands as much often as you can, use your hand sanitizers, your face masks, also always observe social distancing at this point i want to ask you are you what current project are you on on uh ngo yes okay good beautiful uh presently our next project is coming up uh, this saturday 27th of june yeah and the project we want to reach out to the widows of ninja state just want to we discover that a lot of them are complaining of food 
you know, want to dispute food item for them and their children to enable them to feed. You know, it's someone that is alive that think of what to wear. Mm, of course. So, so the food aspect of it is one of the things we want to look at when we reach out to the widows with food items this Saturday. Okay. Yes, is a, that's a closest project. We have a lot of them. Okay. Well, that's a good one. What should we look out for whenever we hear Elijah, widows and orphans, Mission International? What is that unique thing about your NGO? Uh, one of the unique things about my NGO is that we're reaching out to the grassroots uh, uh, widows, orphans, and less privileges. Yes, that's one of the unique things. And anytime you go through our Facebook page, you see that indeed we're reaching out to the, uh, the grassroots. And uh, we're not just bearing that name. There's something that's so unique, more unique on that name. When the widow said that name, they received more strength. <laughs> because yeah, because uh, show more light about the what's that unique thing about the name Elijah <laughs> with an orphan mission okay. international. <laughs> the unique uh, thing about that name is one Elijah is a prophet in the Bible. Oh, huh. I was <laughs> waiting for that. <laughs> okay. It's a prophet that is is a passionate prophet. Yeah, you know. Uh, or oh, uh, able to help a, a widow, you know, by asking the widow to sow into his life, all of that. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so uh, that name gives a lot of widows, most of the Christian, you give them this hope. Once they hear Elijah's widows, everybody wants to be part of us. And Tango will, we have not disappointed them. Mm. If you are opportune to meet them, they will give you their testimonies. Mm. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay, Mr. Lars, did you have anything to add to what Mr. Pastor Elijah said? You have said it all. I think we do more of this humanitarian service just to make sure everybody enjoys from the benefit of what we do. Because sometimes if we and you don't look out for the widow, who else is going to do it? So it's something we are passionate about and it has become part of us. Sometimes if we don't get people to help us, we still try as much as possible to make sure we do what we need to do to put a smile on those beautiful widows' smile face. Okay, what do you do for the NGO? What's your job? Um, what I do actually is what I do. But my own is just to make sure that I know the amount of widow we are reaching out to. As at this ninja state, we have approximately about 222 widows. So these are Saturday programs because of what we are expecting from people that promise to help us in support of this widow, we are not able to get them. So we need to cut it down to 150 or 100. So we are inviting 100 or, or above to the program so we can just help them with priority. Personally, how has this um, um, project affected your life? You know, when you're doing something for the sake of yourself and for God, you can just walk on the street and you just smile for no reason because you feel happy about what you do. So sometimes, me, myself, people always say, but you're always going out helping widows. And how come you don't have money in your pocket? I just smile. You know, they always said it's always the art that is rich, not the pocket. So it makes me happy. It makes me happy. As far as you're putting a smile on people's face, yes. you're happy, you're satisfied so, about that. Absolutely. Okay. Do you have any words of encouragement to people out there? Mm, yes. Uh, the word of encouragement is to make sure that no matter the circumstances they had, they should never settle for less. Because there are so many things happening now. We are about the rape stories, suicide yeah. and all that. Some people can just say that, I've not eaten since morning, let me just take a sniper and drink and die. No. Nobody should just settle for less. They should just keep off, hopefully. One day it will all get better. So Pastor, Pastor yes. Elijah, yes. Um, how do you want, how do you solicit for funds? Yeah, we solicit for funds from individuals who have already believed in our activities. Okay. Yeah, solicit for funds from individuals who have believed in us, most especially on the social media. A lot of help we have received so far is from the uh, followers on social media who believe and have proof what we are doing. So those are means of uh, solicit for funds for them. Okay, okay, that's God will help us. Amen. Well, if you want to reach out to them or have a close um, relationship with what they are doing, please 
you can get the their contact on the screen showing right now it's showing right now you can just copy it out and reach out to them thank you well um what will be your words of encouragement to the viewers out there oh wow my word of encouragement to the viewers out there is this when you live for others god take care of your need and they have to know this that family is not about blood Family is all about those who cares to hold your hands when you need them most. Mm. So any help they give to the widows, orphans, and less privileges, it makes us smile. So the viewers are there should see needs to be part of what we are doing at Elijah's Widows and Orphans Mission International. Yes. Well, he has said it all. Just try and put a smile on someone's face. That's always what we preach. Put a smile on someone's face. Be good to someone. Reach out to someone. You don't know what the person is passing, passing through. You don't know what is happening to them. Just reach out and you'll be blessed that you did. Well, it's nice having you in the Thank studio you. today. Thank you, so much. Thank you for coming. Yeah, well, I appreciate blessed. you. Hope to have you here next time on our program. I can't wait to come. <laughs> okay. Well, for further information, please contact us on the number showing right now on the screen. And don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms showing right now also on the screen. Please do not forget that this is your favorite show, Golden Hat Show with Cheesy. And I am your host, Chizo Bach Kukora. Until I come your way next time, be good, put a smile on someone's face, be happy. Ah, yeah, wash your hands, <laughs> wear your face masks, um, use your hand sanitizer, also maintain social distancing so that we can all stay safe and alive. Until I come your way next time, bye, stay safe.